moving on to kind of meringue style pies, that beautiful meringue that's on top, you make your pie and it looks delicious and you take a, a piece the first day, it's perfect, and then you come back the next day and it's weeping everywhere and or sliding off to the side. There's, you know, a number of different meringues. I make the one that my grandmother did. You know, I'm not doing the heated meringues that on the stove that will give you the sturdier meringue. I'm just making the one that my grandmother did, which was whipping, uh, you know, beating the egg whites first slowly. You don't want to overbeat them. Um, and because if you overbeat them with the sugar in there, they're going to just turn into... Um, I wanted to see what would happen one time if I beat, 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 and it just sure, and you would touch the meringue and it was like, and it, it just looked horrible. And so when you add your sugar, you know, you really need to make sure that that sugar is incorporated in there. Um, because if it's not well incorporated and fine sugar, if it's not incorporated in there, when you put it in the oven um, and it comes out, it, what the beating is, is the sugar that has not been well incorporated. And it's so those, those stovetop meringues, you know, your sugar is well incorporated in there. I don't, as I mentioned, because usually when I'm, uh, I feel like meringues are best within the first four to six hours, those pies. Um, so I, you know, kind of pick my, when I'm going to make a meringue as my grandmother did for big family gatherings, and, you know, we ate it and didn't worry about it because it was gone. It was gone. Yeah, no leftovers, right? Yeah. As far as the slipping <laughs> the meringue all at once. <laughs> as far as the slipping off the top, uh, you know, the, there's the things of, you know, t putting it on a hot top, putting your meringue on a hot top so it kind of uh, adheres to it or putting it or at least a warm top. You know, you could also sprinkle some crumbs of some, you could, you know, ground up some lemon wafer crumbs or something on there and put those on the top so that um, your meringue will sit on that. No, I always start my meringue from the outside and then build it up as I'm going in. Do you prefer having your filling hot when you put it on or do you like your filling, like make your filling and then make your meringue? I, I make my filling, then I make my meringue. Okay. Yeah. And I do it, you know, pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, I'm ready to go. I, I, you know, try and make sure that I'm always using a squeaky clean bowl and squeaky clean beater heads, you know, so um, because if there's anything on them, that will affect the loft. It's so important that the, the sugar is dissolved in the egg weight, essentially. So um, sugar is hydroscopic, meaning it pulls water from things. And so um, if we still have little granules of sugar in there that weren't dissolved, dissolved when you are mixing your meringue up initially, when you then pile it on and bake it, eventually that sugar is going to liquefy and that's the kind of those moisture droplets that we see. And so I think um, some people like to make a Swiss meringue, which is heating the egg whites and sugar over, over a water bath um, and then whipping it to ensure that those sugar granules are, are dissolved. You know, just mixing the sugar and the egg whites slow enough initially so that that sugar dissolves and then kind of getting to that whipping stage, I think can help with that, with that weeping. Mm -hmm.